Hey everyone, and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're excited today to have Jane Barkley with us. Now, Jane is the founder and CEO of I Am At Events, which is kind of a really cool concept that's happening right here in Waterloo Region. So we're gonna really grill Jane on this to find out what's really going on. So welcome, Jane. Thanks so much for having me, Alan. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, tell us about I Am At Events. What's, what's up? Sure, absolutely. Well, I'm at events is really the culmination of years of experience. I originally started out building my personal brand. Mm -hmm. I moved into consulting and I found that there was a real niche. There is a real lack of service in the event industry. Okay. So that's something that we sort of naturally went into and I met events really grew out of that. And, and I saw a need in events to produce, to execute coverage from front to back. So we go in, we own the channels for the event. Mm -hmm. We provide all of the customer service. We we're the buzz creators, we're the excitement generators. So you know, we really pump events up and engage with people online through the events uh, actual networks. So we'll do that for, you know, depending on the event, two to three months leading mm -hmm. up during the event itself. We're wow. on site capturing the event and then we summarize all of that with social data as well afterwards. So that's our key thing. We also work with clients ongoing in social media mm -hmm. management as okay. well. And something that's a little more recent uh, because I'm a social media educator, okay. uh, I, I teach as well. We're doing a lot more training with clients as well so that okay. they feel empowered to sort of, you know, do their own social media in-house. Well, sure, and I guess if, if people become more uh, familiar and comfortable with the social media, which really doesn't have to scare anyone, right? I no, mean, it's not absolutely. That. No. It, so this, is this a young person's game or... <laughs> I know you've written well, about this. Well, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> I have written about this, and it's something that I, I say to absolutely every group that I speak to, that I say to my classes as well. We have this concept that young people just innately do social media well because it's a space that they hang out in all the time. It's something they've grown up with. It's second nature to them. Right. And that's not untrue. But, you know, I have an 18-year-old son, and... So, uh, social media is absolutely second nature to him. I would never hand over the, the client reins to my 18-year-old son just because he uses social media a lot, right? There's a difference between use mm -hmm. and then the maturity and the understanding and all the subtleties that go along with managing a brand. The strategy. Online, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, use or youth in itself is not entirely enough. Right. Uh, you know, you have to have so many other skills and, and traits that you bring to the table. So mm -hmm. being a young person, we see that on the client side a lot. You know, people go out and they sort of grab a young person and go, okay, you know, go to, you get this, I don't. Mm -hmm. and, and that can be a dangerous sort of situation depending on the skills that that young person is bringing to the table, right? And that's been proven, I think, in, in a couple of very famous cases that, oops, well, we put an intern in charge of a, of a huge brand yes. on the social media. Well, yeah. because we didn't know, and uh, that could be really unfortunate. And it's unfortunate for everyone. Yes. Now you've also written, Jane, now you have some great posts on LinkedIn. Thank you, thank you. So you've, you've obviously spent some time on crafting those. Absolutely. <laughs> and one of the things that, that you've said is in your, your four uh, social media myths that must be busted, um, is that content is King? Is that what you said? I'm, I'm not quite sure. So I've, uh, I'm very adamant that content is not king. And, and part of the reason is that in social media in particular, marketing more broadly, but definitely in social media, you know, we have a lot of thought influencers in this space. We also have a lot of people who get into social media because they can. And so that muddies the water a little mm -hmm. bit. And so sometimes we fall back on these sayings, these catchy phrases. And content is king is definitely one of those catchy phrases. But at this point, it's almost become, it's almost become cliche. Mm -hmm. because we use it so much yes. and so that that's part of it the other part of it is that content in itself means nothing without your community without the people that you're trying to communicate with they are king they dictate the relationships yes. they dictate the scenario uh, they they dictate the context a lot of the time as well and I know that's something that that you've talked about on the show before as well as mm -hmm. context and how important that is right. so I think we have to shift away from using catchphrases like content is king and towards what really matters which mm -hmm. is always our online communities and the people we're trying to engage with they're they're really the people who rule isn't that so I mean the customer is king or queen yes <laughs> and yet in some ways you know they're not because they're more like princes and princesses. They're more fickle sure. than, you know, because Queen Elizabeth walks around and you always can predict what the queen is going to do. She's going to have a matching handbag and a matching hat and she's going to stroll and her husband is going to be trolling along five or six feet behind. But princes and princesses, we don't know what they're going to do. Sure. And I think that's more what our current customer situation is. We're not quite sure how they're going to behave. So 
There you go. Now, how did you become so interested in social media? How did you make this your vocation, your business? Really, my background is writing. Mm. I've, I've always been a writer. I care very much for words and mm -hmm. communication. So this is such a natural extension of that, being able to connect with anybody, anywhere, mm -hmm. and you know, share moments and, and figure out how you know, using different words and phrases influences people and the impact that mm -hmm. that has. So yeah. it really started very much from a place of personal brand building and evolved out of that. And, and the interest comes so much, again, from human communication and, and wanting to connect right. through written words, certainly, but I've mm -hmm. also done YouTube blogs for years. And mm -hmm. so uh, that vlogging experience has been really monumental for me in discovering my voice and how to connect with people in mm -hmm. new ways. So there you go. Now, where do we find you on YouTube? So I, well, you can, uh, type Jane Barkley. You'll Jane find Bar me very readily. Okay. Yeah. My username is the Jane Eden, uh, which, I've held on to from the very beginning, but I talk about a really wide array, uh, mm -hmm. array of things. Really the central theme for me is figuring out how to make that human connection. So right. for instance, I've done a vlog about being afraid to die. Oh. And that's, it's a very broad topic and there are mm -hmm. a lot of people who carry that same fear. Okay. And so, you know, I've had 15 year olds from across the world message me in the middle uh -huh. of the night who are experiencing that feeling and you know you can almost hear them and their emotion on the other end of the keyboard mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm never afraid to go into emotional spaces with people and, and share that that connection and, and make people feel like they're not alone either. Well that's important. Yeah. Now you're a graduate of the University of Waterloo with a degree in literature. Yeah my BA yeah, is in English. And was that helpful in determining your pathway forward, Jane? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. I mm -hmm. think that having a, a broad sort of array of interests and experiences is, is what you need to be right. successful here. Yep. Part of what you can't underplay either is a desire to connect with people. You know, it. And whether you're an introvert or not, or you know, the term I really like right now is ambivert. You yes. know, you you can be both actually. Yes. And you're really able to be anything online and still, you know, but you mm -hmm. need to be invested in human connection. Right. The one thing that I will say for me is that I've always been a reader. And so I've certainly, you know, I did a lot of reading at mm -hmm. UFW. Yep. And, you know, the written word, again, when I hire, I actually look for writers. Mm -hmm. That It's the central trait. I know if you're a writer, then you're going to be able to do well as a content creator. Right. And it's also a skill that you can't entirely coach into people either. So if you have a really good bedrock of being able to write mm -hmm. and articulate and communicate, mm -hmm. I think that's extremely helpful. So certainly that I don't think that it in particular prepared me for this, mm -hmm. but in a lot of ways, the, the subject matter and Yes, yeah. it's a nice progression. Part of your journey so far. So far. You've got a long <laughs> journey right. ahead of you. Don't be afraid of that. You've got a long journey. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, Jane, working in digital media, working in social media, how are you finding balancing um, your professional life with your personal life? Because the social is on 24 hours, seven yes, days a week. So absolutely. how are you able to take yourself out of that and find some balance to your life? You know, a couple of key things for me that really help uh, are fluidity and mm -hmm. boundaries. So fluidity to me is being able to, you know, go out and spend time with family and friends, devote my attention to them, but also, I mean, they understand what I do. Mm -hmm. They know that I have to check in, that I can't be unavailable. And so it's creating spaces where I'm never, you know, talking to someone and looking at my phone at the same time. Right. You know, I give my relationships respect. And then I also give myself time to check in, you know, see what notifications, see what's trending, understand what's happening at any mm -hmm. given moment. So fluidity is important for sure. But boundaries too are insanely important. Yes. You know, so no tell way. us about your boundaries. My boundaries, so it, it ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. I will say that especially when we're experiencing times of crisis in the world, mm -hmm. it can be exhausting to be online. You know, when you're getting a constant barrage of negativity mm -hmm. or trauma or crisis, it's very, very difficult to be constantly connected. And we really, really need to give ourselves permission, permission. To, to disconnect and right. to feed the things that you know, we need offline as well, for sure. Good. Now, one of, you, one of the, your specialties has been uh, teaching public speaking, um, how, helping people do presentations. I know that's part of events. Um, what, what kind of advice would you give uh, somebody that's just graduating from school that really doesn't have that personal brand yet, should be developing it, but also how do they communicate better with um, everyone? 
Sure. Well, this seems like uh, odd advice, I'm sure, but uh, start doing video. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's it's enormously effective. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this in my classes too. One of the things that I force them to do, and it's a great equalizer, is uh, a YouTube video. And they don't mm -hmm. have to post it online, right. but I really counsel them to shoot video, practice, 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 mm -hmm. talk to that camera. It really helps you to open up and figure out what is my thing? What is my edge that mm. I carve out? And that's something you absolutely need to develop. Like get clear about that really early on. What mm -hmm. is the thing that I bring, the energy, the personality? You know, right. what is the edge that I have over anybody else? Because there will be something very sure. unique to every individual. To explore that though, you need to practice it. Most people are not really comfortable practicing that to people they know, mm. but video is a really easy way. All you have to do is flip on your camera and take video of you talking about things that you're passionate about and right. start carving out your voice. Figure out what yeah. you want to sound like and how you can bring your energy up so that people get drawn mm -hmm. in, right? That's yep. really, really important that you can hmm. have a great story, you can have a great product, you can have a great whatever the thing is, but if you can't really get someone excited about that, you know, it's sort of all for naught. So Exactly. So I, I totally agree with you and it's great advice. And I think we have to remember that developing a personal brand or developing brands in the marketplace, they're called brands, not blands. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, sure. if you don't take any yeah. risk, if you don't put any sort of personality or energy, then you will have a bland. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's not a good thing. Absolutely. So I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, of all the social platforms that you've been using uh, at I Am, a, I Am At Event, what what seems to be the, the 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 favorite platform for you to use in helping helping build sure. the so I would say that Twitter hands down mm -hmm. is because we do so much event work, you know, and, and Twitter is all about velocity mm -hmm. and it, it lends itself so well to events. So it's always a primary, primary tool. Having said that, I have to go back to YouTube because it was so monumental for me in helping to gain more confidence in my voice and, mm -hmm. you know, the way that I wanted to convey my message, the way that I wanted to speak to people. And that transfers into everything, you know, okay. it transfers into public speaking. If that's something that you want to do, it, tra it transfers into your client relationships or, you know, potential job interviews, whatever it is, you know, having confidence in your voice is so important. So for me, you know, I have to, I have to say YouTube has been a big thing, but on, on the client side and certainly at a business level, Twitter would be, I would say hands down, probably the favorite tool. You know, there's a, there's a fellow in the United States, uh, lives in Manhattan, he's kind of an orangey complexion and a rather interesting hair, hairstyle. Uh, he seems to support your passion for Twitter. Uh, he, uh, he, he's usually on though, about three, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, yes. Not... We're familiar with Mr. Trump. Yeah. Familiar. <laughs> yes. Little if bit. you were his campaign manager, would you, he still have a Twitter account? Oh too? man, I would never be. I, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that I could put myself in that position. And it, you know, it's something that you have to think about in, in terms of who you work with yeah. uh, as a brand. And actually that's something that my, my students have talked about as well mm -hmm. as they go out into the workforce and they're deciding, you know, who do we want to work with? Mm -hmm. I, and that's another piece of advice I would give anyone starting out is be very careful about how you align yourself yes. with other brands and who you work with. Because mm -hmm. I think our tendency when we start out, especially if you're starting your own firm or you're starting your own business, you want to work with everybody. You want to build your portfolio. You know, you want to get the experience under your belt. And sometimes we sacrifice quality for the sake of that. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, when you align yourself with quality people, that feeds back into the quality and trustworthiness sure. of your brand, right? So. Now, the event business, it's had its ups and downs. <laughs> um, I, I think it's on an upswing right now. I, I agree with that. So why is that? I think that what I've seen happen in the event industry over the years is that what we're really trending towards right now is creating experiences. Yes. So events have really had to change as a result of that. Mm -hmm. It's not just about, you know, having a venue and filling it with some stuff that's cool. Right. Yeah. You know, what's happening now is that event organizers, the ones who are really ahead of the curve, are really thinking about a holistic sort of experience that mm -hmm. people are going to have. And so social media has to align very closely with that. How are we creating that experience? that you want people to have that you want the feeling that you want them to walk away with mm -hmm. you know there has to be something that really gels yes. that whole thing so right. that to me is where the event industry has has sort of taken up again mm -hmm. uh, taken off again right. is as people realize that 
we want experiences now. Mm -hmm. And especially because I think that on the consumer side, we're also in this sort of interesting place where a lot of people want experiences, not things. Right. Right? Yep. So there's a real opportunity there to, sure. to create cool experiences that, that people walk away feeling like, I would do that again in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. So, so what kind of event now is, um, is, is really interesting for people? What, what, what's drawing people um, to a central place, whether it's uh, from an online perspective or an in-person perspective? Is it a learning experience? Is it theatrical? Is it musical? What? It really varies because, I mean, there are groups of people and communities of people who are very different and they want something different. Mm -hmm. So it's really about connection, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, connecting with a group of people who are similarly minded, who are all of, you know, a similar energy. Mm -hmm. yep. And that varies so much from space to space. Right. So I wouldn't say that there's any one particular uh, event style that's going to win out over others, but it's always through that mindfulness mm -hmm. of that that group of people. Who are they? What's the experience that they want to have? They How want. are we providing that and taking it over the top bit yeah. too, right? Like exceeding the expectation mm -hmm. that that particular community of people has. Yeah. So what's next? What's next for uh, you personally, Jane Barkley, and what's next for your organization? Well, so. Up next for me, I've mm -hmm. been doing a lot of speaking mm -hmm. lately, and that's something that I really, really love. I, and not something I'd say I'm even honestly that natural at. I get nervous anytime I have to go up sure. and speak in front of a group of people. Yep. That's part of why I do it. And you know, there's things I, I've been getting away from my YouTube vlogs for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm always sort of, you know, cracking the plan for the yes. next series of things. So there's certainly things on the personal brand side that I, I would love to do. In terms of I'm at events, mm -hmm. we have so much going on behind the scenes right now. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of a taste of Please that. Please do. The training is one thing, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, this is on the QT. Jane is letting us in on the backstory. Well, Please go so, ahead. You know, I did mention training, and that's yes. something that hasn't really been part of our forward-facing messaging. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this niche of events, which I, I love that we've carved that out. But training has become a much larger part of what we do. So yeah. we've been developing our training program, mm -hmm. doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with people so that okay. we can start delivering that training online to anybody yes anywhere. So that's right. something I'm really excited about getting Perfect. going. The other thing that nobody knows about us uh, is that we've actually been doing social media investigations as oh, well. So tell us about there, that. well, there are any number of reasons why you know a person or a company might uh, need to be investigated, mm -hmm. and we have the tools to be able to do the online component of that. So that's been a service that we've. It's been very much behind the scenes, mm -hmm. not part of what we we openly kind of advertise right. or, or sure. disclose that we do, but it's a really interesting field mm -hmm. right now. It's very interesting work, but the field itself, uh, again, it's an area where there aren't a lot of people who have sort of vibed into it yet. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's that's pretty exciting work for us as that's well. That's innovative. And I'm now very worried. <laughs> I, I, please disconnect me from everything. I actually have a medic alert bracelet. I'm not allergic to anything or anything. It just says, please clear my browser history. <laughs> <laughs> says that right there, and uh, hopefully somebody will read that. <laughs> Take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jane, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today about Jay Barkley, but also about I Am At Events, uh, because I think you've got a real neat opportunity here to have a lot of fun, create a lot of value, for sure, and retire very wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll see about that. Mm -hmm. So I think we have, you know, a picture of entrepreneurship where it's going to lead to riches and, and mm. fame. And for me, the the fun that we get to have and the people that we get to work with. Right. I mean, on absolutely every end of the spectrum. Again, I'm really privileged to be in this field, and and so thankful to have the chance to talk to people like you. Well, we're thankful for people like you. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jane, and thanks for tuning in, everybody, to AQ's Blog and Grill. Now, you can find Jane uh, online at uh, I am at events. Uh, you can also check uh, her LinkedIn profile, which has got some great posts on it, and check out her YouTube channel because I think she brought up some very good points on how we can use that to develop our own personal voice, our point of view, uh, and our personal brand. Key things. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Hughes Blog and Grill.